today um, we are going to learn how to break barriers and we're going to learn how to identify what your barriers are okay so um, as a matter of fact uh, breaking barriers could be um, many things in your life uh, so it would be up to what your barrier is so for a moment you can think about as I'm talking what your barrier in your personal life would be so what you're going to do as I'm explaining some of these just start going through your files in your mind and think about what's been stopping you from reaching your goal so think about what your goal has been all your life what has your obstacle been okay and I know we have many obstacles and life has been a long it's been a long life so if you're 30 years old you've had 30 years of obstacles if you're 40 50 and so forth and that's exactly and that could be challenging to think about well I had a goal 10 years ago but it was maybe going uh, I wanted to be a manager um, at a, at a store, at a chain, you know, I wanted to be the best manager here at this um, store. I mean, let's say Waterburger, okay? Uh, and now your goal is not to be the manager of the store. Now you want to be a manager maybe for a corporation, a computer corporate corporation. So you want to you want to reach a higher level. And so the goals change as you grow up, as things uh, start to unveil in your life because we mature and as we mature and as life comes towards you you know like let's say you were in the Waterburger business for a little while and you're a cashier person well cashier person uh, says well I'm here for one year now or six months let's say and I'm really tired of being the cashier person I want to be the manager that's telling me what to do so I want to jump into this next position and so that's how you can you can start working harder and proving yourself that you can change from a cashier person to a supervisor in the same chain. Work, test yourself in any position that you're at at, this, at that moment, as today, and say, okay, am I happy where I'm at right now? Is this really what I want to do in my life? And if it is, say, ask yourself, okay, I, I do like working here for this company. However, I'm not too happy with my pay rate. So how can I change my pay rate where I'm at? You'd have to change positions, Invest. right? And then when you change positions, uh, what is it gonna take to change your position? Motivation. How, motivation, that's right. How are you gonna motivate yourself and how are you going to educate yourself or get trained to reach that that position? So you can talk to the manager and you get yourself in that position. You start setting yourself up, setting yourself up. And let's say you are already at a higher level and you're in a corporate position and you are overwhelmed with all of the duties you have, all the responsibilities, you are uh, overseeing 20 people. You have 20 employees under you. Uh, you've been successful in it, let's say 10 years. Now you're getting burned out. Now you're burned out. What are you gonna do then? So you ask yourself, do I wanna stay here? I've been here 10 years and I'm doing the same thing over and over. How did you get there? Well, maybe you went to school for it. Maybe that's exactly what you wanted to do, uh, be a corporate manager, supervisor. Maybe um, you just fell into the job. Sometimes that happens to us. We just fall into a job because it's open for you and someone referred you to that company and you, you climbed up a little bit and you got there and then you, you stayed. So you're, you're good. And it covered your finances and it was working for you. Okay, and that's great. That's really great. So now, that's what I'm talking about, unlocking your abilities. So once we have that established, which we do, so now you're going to um, consider, uh, hold on just a second. Oh, yeah. Okay. And now in order to unlock your abilities, 
whether you're at the corporate level or at a, a lesser level. Not that Amy's, you know, they're, they're all respectable careers. They're all respectable jobs. Everyone needs a manager to a library. Everyone needs a cashier at Walmart. Everyone needs HEB, any grocery store. They're all important. Department stores, you know, clothing stores, all of those are important. But what's in your heart? What's in your spirit? What's in your mind? Do you find yourself sometimes um, feeling that you have more to give than just that where you're at? Now, I only ask that because there are some people who have reached these levels and they just they're just there, but they don't they want more. They have more to give. Maybe you've grown up and you've grown out of that position in your heart, in your spirit. You've reached success for 10 years, maybe 20 years at this corporate level or at any level of a job you're at, but you've outgrown it. You're done. You're done with that job. So now what are you going to do? So that's when you dig into yourself deeper and ask yourself, what else can I do? What, what else can I offer anyone? How can I grow? How can I squeeze myself to grow and be more productive? Maybe give. Giving always makes people happy. It giving makes people feel better. So first we have to understand what humanness is. Humanness is you. Okay? What about you? So humanness, uh, I ask, because people see themselves as, yes, I'm human. I'm a person. We're people, right? We're people. But humanness is the ingredients of what we are. And I don't mean as a, as a person, your, your personal characteristics of of each one of you or myself, humanness is, is a whole, is all humans, all people as a whole. What is the basic foundation? And so what that is, so humanness why, is why we make mistakes, why we feel sad or happy, why we struggle with ourselves or others. That's what humanness is. It's why we have choices and choices to make, okay? That's what give, allows us to have choices. It allows us to be able to make mistakes. That's the humanness. That's why we make mistakes. We make bad decisions. So, it's, so what's tugging at your heart every day? What's tugging at you? What is it you need? What do you need? What do you really, really need deep down inside yourself? And at the same time that you're thinking about what you need, what can you do with that and turn that around as to, okay, so what I needed, for example, I'll use myself for example, I needed to help myself and fix myself from my problems I had. And once I started to dig into fixing myself, I decided there are so many people just like me. So now I'm going to turn that around and I'm going to find you. I need to find you who's like me. And I'm going to help you because I fixed me and I know how to do it. Okay? So you also can do the same. You also can do the same. And here, here are some ideas. Uh, how, how does uh, this helping you unlock your abilities? Okay. So when you carry all your troubled past luggage on your back, getting depressed, getting discouraged, right? We all have that. We all go through depression, discouragement, sadness. We trip over our own feet. Uh, sometimes someone can suggest that you do this or that in your life. And because they're telling you what you should do could make you trip because it's not coming from you. And maybe they see you, see some qualities in you and they're trying to help. 
which is okay. You can consider it, think about it, sleep on it, and make sure it really is a fit for you. If it is not a fit for you, then you just do some self-inventory. Think about yourself a little bit deeper, a little more self-inventory. So there's others that may be holding you back. That's why uh, it's important to, to be a little more aware of people's behavior. I've studied behavior from people for all my life. It's been a lifetime of observing and researching. And as I wrote in my uh, life story, which you have in your folders today, um, I, I'm here, we have one hour today, so I, I didn't want to give you um, too much of talking about my story personally, so you can read it when you go home and, and think about it. But um, when, you're, when you're trying to uh, fix yourself, it helps to see the bigger picture of life and people the humanness in people. And the people can hold you back, and you need to just try to break through that barrier. And that's what I'm gonna help you understand, and I'll show you what exactly that is. We'll be a little more specific with that. At the same time, oh, it worked this time. <laughs> so uh, breaking down, the breaking down of humanness. This, these are the ingredients of humanness. And there's a few more to add to it, but you know, the list can get longer. <laughs> so, fear that you can't do it, right? Vulnerability, skepticism, need for emotional and intellectual recognition, hate, anger, depression, love, empathy, sympathy, receiving and giving from people. All of those things are what we are capable of. We're capable of doing, we're capable of feeling all of those, we're capable of giving that out to people. We can give out hate, we can give out our aggressions, we can give out our depression, all of that energy, all of that within us does seep out into others because you, as you, you, I'm sure all of you have experienced that when someone's in a bad mood, you can sure see that. You can feel it and see it and you're like, wow, this person's not having a good day. So, you know, that's how it seeps out of us. And it does affect the person in front of you, the person next to you, the person you work with, the person you live with, um, anyone you're encountering. It does show. Have you been to a store with a cashier person, you're checking out, and they just really feel like, what? they roll your eyes at you like, oh gosh, here we go again. Yes. <laughs> what are you, and it makes you feel like, uh, am I bothering you? Mm -hmm. Do you not want to, Check out my 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 items at the store. <laughs> Do you not want to help me here? I mean, you, maybe she should go home, or he should go home, right? Um, so it's important that we all try to be uh, more aware of ourselves. Always keep yourself in check as much as possible. Uh, your choice of words uh, is incredulous. Uh, your choice of words can be horrible. They can be horrendous. They can come out just, it's like just throwing up on somebody, just very offensive, our words. And also the love, the love part of your words. If you say kind things, kind words, choosing the right words, uh, it, it makes the other person reciprocate accordingly. So if it's a, a bad word or an unkind word, they reciprocate, reciprocate accordingly. It, it rubs them wrong. So, that's our humanness, right? Yeah. At the same time, since you now know this, uh, we are accountable. We're accountable for our own humanness. Um, at the same time, we're not responsible for others' humanness, if that makes sense to you. Like, mm -hmm. others, others have their humanness, everyone's carrying their own humanness ingredients, right? And we all have the choice which one we want to do. Are we going to forgive you today? Do I feel like forgiving you today? Do I feel like loving on you today? Do I feel like cursing you today? Hating you? Now, why would I do that? You know why I would love you today? Because I'm feeling happy. I'm feeling love. I feel, I feel it in me. If I'm angry and having a bad day, 
I'm going to hate on you, and you're going to agitate me, and I'm going to, you're going to feel it, right? Okay. How do you handle that? How do you handle that? Good question. Exactly. I can smile to everybody. Tell me. Exactly. How do we handle when 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 you're angry and you're feeling agitated? You just want to rip somebody's head off or choke them. You you're beside yourself. What do you do? This is what I do. This is what I highly suggest. Is you take a deep breath. You have to ride the bull by the horns in a sense, is, which is you, you're the bull. You're your own bull that you have to ride yourself. So people normally, they think, I'm gonna ride the problem, I'm gonna ride the problem by the horns. The, the, the actual issue that's at, out in front of you, well, I'm gonna ride by the, by the horns and I'm, I'm taking this problem. That's all wrong. That's an external thing. That's something that came out of you. That's, it's in you. The problem is actually coming from within yourself, your own mind, your own mindset, your own heart. So you can't write the problem exactly in an external manner because people do tend to see it as, a, as a, an external issue or maybe it's your fault. It's that person's that person is causing me to have a bull in front of me and I gotta ride it. How am I gonna ride that bull in front of me that you're causing? Well, no. It's how you interpret, how you comprehend it, how you respond, how you react. How are you going to see that? You take offense immediately? Or are you gonna say, whoa, wait a minute. Move it to the side, move that, the issue which is controlling your mind. It's your own mind. You have to control your own mind by asking yourself, and this is quick, this is quick. It's not easy, but you just have to keep a check on yourself all the time and say, well, this person's having a, a really bad day. Uh, so in your mind, you start to think, you have to think, okay, count to 10, I'm gonna take a deep breath. Where is this person coming from? Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sonia Rocha. So I just uh, showed you a snippet of my uh, seminar from yesterday, and it's the topic regarding humanness. And I'd like to elaborate a little bit more on that, but first, uh, I had a question from one of my clients after the seminar, and the question was uh, regarding love. What a great topic, right? So love, of course, is a beautiful thing. And we all, all of us need love. We want love, we yearn for it, we seek it in many ways. And I just wanna share with you that we all, as you know, have heartbreaks. We have joy from it. You can um, fall in love to where the level of where you're just in a bubble, you're, floating on a cloud and it's beautiful to have that. At the same time, there's times when that cloud crashes and you, you're hurt, you're devastated, uh, things like that occur in life. Um, and this is where I wanna focus. To help answer this question, which is how do you, how does someone get through the pain of a heartbreak? of a lost love. Well, the lost love and the heartbreak are deeply uh, painful, yes. It, it feels like a death. It's like when you, you lost someone to a death. Just as a divorce, they're both levels statistically uh, by psychologists, psychiatrists, that death and divorce are right there hand in hand with feeling like a death. So can lost love. When you're so in love with somebody and you get heartbroken, of course it's devastating and, and yes, you get depressed. So my answer to how to cope with this is first of all, allow yourself to, to feel the sadness. You have to mourn for that loss. 
you can cry, you should. Um, get through the stages. There are stages you, you have them. Uh, some people will cry right away and be, you know, emotionally correct with their crying, and some are emotionally correct to where they need to wait a little while. Sometimes the body goes through a shock. Your mind goes through a shock. They can't believe that they just got you were heartbroken and this person left them for whatever reason. Uh, sometimes it could be our own fault. Sometimes it's not. It does take two people. Trust me, uh, every relationship takes two people. And not to put blame on either one, the reality is this. If we look more into ourselves and look into what might have been uh, what we could have done better, um, sometimes, you know, it, it, it can help because we tend to blame the other person. Well, she or he should have done this more, or he or she never listened to me, and she never did or he never did what I asked him to do, and he's lazy or she's lazy. Uh, I had to do everything, or maybe he or she cheated on me. Um, I gave him or her everything that I ever could, and they're just never happy. There are a million situations uh, in a relationship. But sometimes, you know, uh, even though the other person might have not met your expectations, uh, they also have their luggage. Just like I said in the seminar, in the little snippet you just finished watching, I mentioned there about having your luggage and your backpack full of your past and your the, the ways that we comp miscomprehended things when we were growing up. There's sometimes situations where we, we were just misled. We were taught wrong, we, mis we learned it wrong. And then you meet somebody, you know, we grow up and then you meet that person and that person, you know, you're attracted, you, you love each other, you like each other for which, you know, for, in the beginning, the first year is always great, right? First six months, first year. But that's when, you know, you get to know someone and that's when all the true colors, let's say, the true colors come out of that person. Well, really those true colors are just the humanness in that person. And like I said in the video uh, that you just saw, that the humanness is, is where we have our uh, disappointments. You know, we, we're allowed, and the humanness of us, we're allowed to make mistakes. We can hate, we can fear, we can uh, be skeptical about things. We be, we're frustrated. We can forgive, or we can have empathy, we can love. With all of these choices to make as a human, that's what we're allowed because we are human. Now don't forget, so is your partner. Your partner is human too. And they have their humanness, their issues before you. they met you. So that's why it's a little challenging and it, it's difficult in relationships sometimes. That's why it takes some work to get to know each other. But first, if you don't know yourself very well, then it's harder to get to know the other person. The other person may not know themselves very well. So then here we go with a crash, you know? Um, I hope that makes sense. I think you understand what I mean by that. So the truth is this. Uh, we can do as much as we can, but the person has left you or you left that person. It could go either way and you're still heartbroken, even though sometimes we make that move to leave a person for because it's, it's a destructive relationship, it's uh, not healthy, uh, so you have to leave. <clears throat> That's understandable as well. At the same time, um, it, you're still heartbroken. So in order to cope with that, don't beat yourself up. First of all, don't beat yourself up because that's what we tend to do. The humanness in ourselves, we tend to beat ourselves up and we don't do that. You don't want to say, well, I did everything and I wasn't appreciated. And, um, but they have told you they appreciated you every now and then. It may not, may not be every day, but we tend to forget, you know. And there were times where, you know, you yelling and screaming at each other maybe or saying, ugly words to each other and some words can't be taken back. Some of that pain 
with the ugly words we choose can really be devastating in our heart and our spirit and those are harder to forget and then it makes it harder to forgive especially when you're still with the person so you, you still have that vicious circle nevertheless coping with a lost love is um is is you're able to do it it's just going to take some time first of all remember why you love them enjoy the memories of the fun times you've had come to peace with that come to peace with knowing that you both liked taking walks on the beach you know or both like going to the same restaurant and how much you both like the same foods or how you shared food at the table together or had that glass of wine and watch a good movie together uh, going to concerts together just having good fun talks laughing whatever you did and appreciate and thank god for that you know because there's some people that never love they never get that chance and not that opportunity to love at all so i would say to you if you experience a lost love understand their humanness forgive them forgive yourself okay just forgive yourself for being human and their humanness okay we all make mistakes no one is perfect forgive and, and let it be and just understand and appreciate the time you did have and if you see that person again say hello if they want to respond if they see you sometimes they can't get over they don't know how to forgive try not to take that personally if they if you do see them you can say hello be respectful uh, if they don't and they turn around and just you know it's just because they're not ready or they don't have these tools that I'm sharing with you today they don't understand humanness they don't understand how to forgive how to have empathy how to appreciate what there was together all they focused on was that they're hurt they're mad and that's all they're gonna stick with they can't get out of that and so when they see you it's like you know it's just oh that person hurt me it's her his her father her fault you know and they had no blame that's not true okay so you have to understand that if you can really just open your mind to understanding that be more um you know aware of that and aware of the humanness forgive and empathize and sympathize you will be able to cope and get through this better and here's some other things you'll never forget but you don't have to have that that pain and that yearning and the awful feeling of that it's like a deathly feeling of a loss you don't have to carry that anymore it doesn't have to be at your upfront at your forefront at your surface of your of your mind and your spirit your, and your soul you don't have to have it come to the surface anymore forgive understand the humanness that everyone has we all make mistakes no one's perfect we all always try to do our best everyone usually has the best intentions for each other but we make mistakes given that can give you a, a deep peace and you can overcome the pain of a loss so i hope that you can execute that and put it to work every day just keep that you know remembering that and now from from here on out your next relationship whether it be a emotion um, i'm sorry a, um, a personal relationship or even if it's a family member relationship that you need to forgive someone to a friend uh, learn to forgive try to forgive uh, remember humanness humanness is is the ingredient of um, failure hatred uh, and all, all those things come so easy to us you know it just does it's sad but it does uh, so we need to learn how to just be stronger about it's it's on our mindset it's all in our mind and we can learn to have control of our mindset by replacing it with better words better thinking process and that's what I teach at all my seminars so thank you for that question and I encourage more questions and I will post this up on YouTube for anyone else that may uh, need to hear about this uh, issue that you're experiencing. So if you have another question you'd like me to um, address, go to my website, www.ica-innovative-ica.com, 
That's www.innovative-ica.com. And check out my YouTube channel as well. And uh, don't forget, October 13th, I'm having another seminar. I invite you to come to my seminar. To purchase your ticket, go ahead to my website and, and save your seats because they go fast. The limited seating. So again, thank you, and I'll see you soon. Bye.